Now, finally exiting the woods, the boy, now the teen, standing on a hill looking down at the land of Amaria was in wonder. It was a land almost surrounded completely by the ocean. Streams leading from the ocean through the grass into the cobblestone village ran water mills and the shops of the marketplace. The land's power supply was the ocean. Now the teen decided it was worth it to take a small break before entering Amaria and opened his bag to eat a small treat given to him by his friends in the woods. Upon opening his bag, the chest with the magic seeds fell out and opened, spilling the seeds on the grass. Hmm, I'll put them back in just a second, he says to himself. No one is around to take them. Upon wiping his hands off on his trousers, a huge blackbird swooped down, scooping two of the seeds in its beak and flew high towards the ocean. Now the teen chased after the huge blackbird, waving his fists upset that he was startled, not really aware of the importance of the stolen seeds. And everything waited by the teen's bag, watching him, floating silently. Now while the blackbird flew over the ocean, a whale surfaced and blew air from its blowhole in the path of the bird's flight, making the bird lose its balance, dropping one of the seeds into the ocean. And everything knew. The blackbird swallowed the other seed, flying higher and higher, and was never seen again. Now, the teen liked the chest, and because there were two seeds left, he didn't feel completely bad. So. He picked up his bag and entered Amaria, while everything followed behind him. At the entrance of Amaria, everything created a gnome with one leg longer than the other. And this gnome, or this dwarf, he wore a red hat, and everything assigned the dwarf to guard the entrance. The teen didn't know or have an idea. The dwarf stopped him asking, Who are you? The teen replied, I don't know. The door flimped off to the side so the teen could enter and handed him a mirror, frowning. Take this mirror and enter. Thank you, the teen replied, clipping the mirror on his waist as he took his first step into Amaria. Now in Amaria before him was a marketplace. Shops lined both sides of his path for a half mile like a hallway. A stream of water flowed in the ground on his left in front of each store, and led far ahead. A stream of water flowed in the ground on his right in front of each store, and led the same. Behind each shop were water generators to supply power. Small pinwheels planted in front of the shops spun from the currents of the water streams that led far ahead. People walked back and forth from each shop greeting one another. Big smiles and laughing children ran between the shops. Now the teen liked Amoria. He felt comfortable there and everyone was kind, compassionate and affectionate. Some people sat legs folded under them in deep silence next to their shops and gently smiled while the teen walked by. This was all new to the teen and he continued to walk along the path of shops and met another teen who arrived to Amaria like he did and they instantly became friends. Months went by of the teen and his friend playing in Amaria, learning new skills and meeting new people. And one day, the teen began to talk about his life in the unknown in a place of time with his friend. The teen shared that he was unseen and barely known. His friend became sad for him and frowned while the teen told the story. The teen looked confused. Why are you sad? What did I do? His friend offered him a hug and told him to look in the mirror he was given. Don't you see? Asked the friend. No. The teen saw everything behind him in the mirror and turned around. It's just everything behind me. The friend grabs his own mirror and looks at it. Look here, he says. The teen sees the friend in the mirror. There's another you there, says the teen. Yes, that's why I'm sad for you. You can't see yourself because of the unknown in a place of time. Now, everything floated on a hill in Amaria, watching the teen. 
The teen wanted to see himself, but could not understand the sadness in the friend. In Amaria, the teen taught the friend about fishing and shared his fishing experiences when he was younger. He learned how to pull up huge catfish, how to flick his line and reel the fish in. He knew when to throw the line and what times of the day were best, but he always wanted to pull a fish bigger than catfish. He said, I always feel like there's something bigger in the ocean. I feel it, but I never found it yet. And I've had dreams of catching a huge fish that I could show the world. One day, I'm going to get it. And the friend nodded in agreement. Now, some days the teen would travel through the woods and back to the unknown in a place of time to run errands for his parents, show the new fish he caught, and acquire new foods. Yes, the wall put up between them when he left was down. But whenever the teen would visit, he would turn into the boy again. And he didn't know it or feel it, but the parents knew it and felt it. And that's what they wanted. And for that, he was treated like a boy and everything new. Whenever the teen would return to the unknown in a place of time to show the new fish he caught, no one noticed because they were preoccupied with their everything. They were also upset with him for leaving and never forgave him. So they began to devise a plan to keep him there. One special day, the teen traveled to the unknown in a place of time to ask for help. The parents conspired upon his return to give him no help in hopes of bringing him back to the unknown in a place of time. Now, in hopes of crippling him so he could not leave, they shot an arrow in both of his legs and attempted to shoot his heart, but it barely missed. He could not walk and his heart ached, but he managed to escape and everything new, and everything learned more. The teen crawled his way back through the woods, receiving help from all the dragonflies, trees, and fairies to stop the bleeding. The teen crawled his way down the hill where the birds stole his seeds, past the dwarf at the gate that gave him the mirror, and entered on Maria. The teen couldn't help but notice that the sun wasn't as bright there, and suddenly the teen fell asleep on the cobblestone. 